I'd like to thank the Tokyo International Short Film Festival for inviting me to do this interview. Thank you. Tell us about yourself. What inspired you to become a filmmaker? I started doing a lot of extra work in San Diego. I worked on the television show Renegade. I did some extra work on Gods and Monsters, Academy Award winning film, and I started to look at the process of how people were setting up cameras, how they were going about setting up lighting, and that intrigued me. And as an actor, I said to myself, why look for work? Just start creating your own pictures. And that's what I did. Talk about your last work. What are some of the challenges you face during production? Apache Girl, Lozen and Detatse, two true life fearless Apache warriors on a journey. So I had to cover many different season changes. I remember once we were out at the Chiricahua Mountains, 29 degrees. My thumb was so cold I couldn't even turn the camera on. We got a scene where one of the characters was coming down a snow-packed mountain on to New Mexico to get another character in this raging river. So it was the season change and we shot this film on original Apache land so acquiring the formal permissions was okay but it was just basically the travel aspect and we were in the COVID pandemic during this time and where we shot there were hardly any people so in that sense um, difficulty with weather I'd say would be the main factor. What makes you want to tell stories? In other words, what are the themes or issues you want to incorporate into your work? Truth. I want to bring awareness to people, to expose them to the truth. All pictures, stories that are on the big screen or streaming we must have some truth to them. It doesn't matter about the genre, whether it's horror, whether it's comedy, as long as everything stays truthful. People go to the movies to be entertained. They want to be moved or they want to learn something. And if they can learn something from my short films or any project that's out there, it's a good thing. But truth and awareness is what I want to bring. Please tell us about your vision and your method of approaching a new project. Research. Apache Girl was a storyline biopic. I had to read four different books. I really researched um, that particular era of the Apache Wars in, in Southern Arizona. So I would tell any filmmaker, if you're doing anything on a biopic or a storyline, uh, do your research. Uh, my first picture bequest uh, was a mental illness, suicide, murder situation, and I've researched that to the point where I knew some statistics on how that affected people, but it's the preparation. If it's a fiction film, you can, you can cheat that a little bit. Um, there really is no truth to that as long as the actors are conveying that within the dialogue. But I look at it as um, research and just being prepared. There's an old saying in Hollywood with script writers, uh, know what you write, but you better know what you're writing. Who are your filmmaking influencers? What are the films that were influential for you? Glad you asked that question. I love this question. Ron Howard and Orson Welles. Two of the most prolific directors in my eyes as far as their vision. Orson Welles came up with what is known as the low camera angle cut in which he depicted the character bigger than life holding the power. I used that technique in Apache Girl when Lozen came upon the miner encroaching on Apache lands and held him at gunpoint and therefore she had the power over him as I cut back and forth between an actor sitting and that low angle cut, and I thought it came out perfect. Well, we all know Ron Howard, he's done many, many different pictures, but what I like about Ron is particularly after I watched him on an interview, he once said, go to the movie that has your favorite scene, watch it, watch it over and over again, and then watch it without the sound. And I edited Apache Girl, and I can tell you, when you watch a scene without the sound and you're editing, you see how other editors put this together and told the story through different camera angles. It makes the world a difference when you watch the scene without the sound and I thank Ron Howard for that interview that uh, I watched and I learned a lot. But Orson Welles and Ron Howard, I would say, are the two that have influenced me the most. How do you think the industry is changing? 
how has COVID affected independent filmmaking or creation? Streaming. I think streaming now, you can go into your home and you can get four or five different channels. Uh, people now want to go back to the movies, but streaming for sure. As far as COVID's concerned, I can only give you an example. I put out a casting notice for Return of Apache Girl, which is the sequel to Apache Girl, and actors were voluntarily giving me information, have the vaccination card. So actors are actually reaching out and saying, hey, I'm vaccinated, and the industry is going to change in that particular regards because they're going to look at a lot of different safety measures, whether you're on location or on set, so... Uh, hopefully we can just move forward on with this. <clears throat> what advice would you give to aspiring artists? What are some of the things they must follow or avoid? I'm not going to give you the basic cliche answers, which everybody does. Rejection, keep your day job, have passion for the industry. We know that. Uh, I can give you a true life example. Years and years ago, I was in an interview with an agent in Hollywood, and I noticed when I got on the elevator, Billy D. Williams was there. So instead of asking for an autograph, I mean, I just stayed focused. And as the elevator came to a stop and we walked into the lobby, I said, uh, excuse me, Mr. Williams, I'm an up and coming actor. Hopefully, can you give me some advice? He turned and said this, always remember that you chose to be in this industry. And I'll never forget that. So actors have to realize, hey, I chose this. Use that if you're down and out. That works. As far as things to avoid, or I would say things you should do and or avoid, when a producer, casting director, some reaches out to you and they know you've already been cast and you're going to be in the picture, return their phone calls or their texts in a prop manner. I don't mean 15 seconds, a minute later, but you've got to get back to them quickly. They're trying to raise money, they're trying to look for locations, and they've got this big checklist. And when you get back to them, that makes them feel you're on the same page, on the team, and they can check that off and go on to the next thing for the day. Communication is crucial. So it's not avoiding something, avoid not getting back with people. You must communicate. Do you think films or stories can bring about a change in the world? I don't know about a change because people go to the movies for all different reasons. People go to the movies to be moved. Um, people go to the movies to be entertained. So I don't know if you did a film on climate change or like Apache Girl introducing Lozen and Detatse to the world, make people aware. And particularly when they leave the theater, they can say, hey, I'll get behind that cause depending on what the movie's about, or hey, I learned something. Um, in Apache Girl, I told a story about a couple of Apache chiefs, and when I came out of the film festival, uh, some people in the lobby said, hey, I never knew that. And so I felt good about bringing awareness to that particular subject in my film. What do you think people like to watch these days? Has the pandemic changed people's taste? People are different. People like a lot of things. I've ran into people that love horror or they love comedy. I myself love the drama, the true life depiction of uh, historical figures or a message behind that film. So it depends on the genre and it depends on the individual person. But there's a lot out there today, especially when we talked about streaming and, and things like that. So people are different. Please tell us about your upcoming projects. The sequel to Apache Girl, Return of Apache Girl. Lozen is back, she's on a journey, she enters this town, she finds out who killed her brother Victorio, and incidentally keep in mind both Lozen and Victorio are true life Apache warriors, and I just want to continue that story, so we'll be on location, there'll be horses involved, there'll be a lot of good things, and let's just continue with Apache Girl.